Hallelujah. Salvation and glory. the defender, you are our shield, you are our rock, you are glorious, you are wonderful, you are amen, we bless your holy name, thank you our father, thank you king of glory for the gift of this new mount, thank you our father for keeping us under your cover, we worship you. Thank you for the help that you have given unto us. Thank you for our finances. Thank you for our peace that we enjoy. Thank you for our life. Father, we bless your holy name. Thank you for this new day. Thank you for this moment of new beginnings. Glory and honor to your holy name. Our Father and our God, we say thank you. Thank you for this new RCCG year. Father, take all the glory. Thank you because you have sealed our blessings and we receive abundance of grace and blessings from you. Father, take all the glory. Take all the honor. Take all the adoration. Eternal Rock of Ages, speak to our life. Speak to our situation. As we put our hands on the plow, Father, the grace to look on and look up unto you, grant unto us. Amen. Let us not look back. Amen. Let us not be weary. Let us not faint. Father, do a new thing in our lives. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Wonderful choir. Children of God, the Lord will continually bless you. Amen. It's not a time for long sermon, but I like us to remind. I want to remind you of someone. He is our Maker. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the King of Kings. He is the reason for all that we see. He is the one who has been, who is, and who will forever be. He is the unex unexplainable and un unsearchable God. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. But I've brought one thing, attribute of him to you today. Just want to you to open your minds and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you. I sat there listening to all the testimonies and I was overwhelmed by what God can do, what he is doing, and what he will do. Because those are just examples of what he will do. Brethren, the Lord Almighty is set to do a new thing in our lives. Amen. And the Spirit of God is one. I We were praying this morning and uh, Dicky Bolland Drew mentioned to me that, and I think he mentioned it here too, that God is said to do something. I don't take things for, I don't think things for granted. Yes, was it yesterday or during the course of the convention and uh, talking about convention, thank God we we, we were a viewing center. Amen. I thought somebody would be excited with that. Some of us came here, and uh, since I came to this country, this was my best convention, if I'm not in this. Because all through the day, in the night, I was part of it. Thank God for technology. And I praise the name of the Lord for the gift of technology. And I want to encourage us. Congress is coming. 
whereby we will have a view center again. Please be part of it. You can stay in the comfort of your beds and uh, sofas, but there is something that is special, which our dad in the Lord also acknowledged. There's something that is special in corporate uh, fellowship. Because the word of God, nobody can, 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 can rewrite it. He said, where two or three are gathered, there you shall be. You might say you are in the spirit with those people who have over 5,000 miles away. But a window of opportunity has been opened by God. And I like all of us to be part of it. But whether you like it or not, whether you complied or not, all of us will be beneficiaries of the blessings Amen. in Jesus' name. It was just that those of us who are here, we got something special. Amen. Amen. And uh, when you see somebody who was here, please, uh, who were here, shake their hand so that special blessing can be transferred. Amen. Amen. I started by saying I want to remind us of this one. And one attribute of this, our God, is that he is the great provider. Hallelujah. What? The Kimbolo and Rose saw, I saw during the convention. The way I saw it was that if you are going to be given a gift and the gift was covered and the gift was wheeled, the gift had legs like maybe a vehicle or a trolley, it was wheeled and you were asked to get up and unveil the, the it was covered. So it was wheeled. So a setting like this church and they said if you and some people said if we need to me to uncover it at where they were sitting and some other people didn't have the understanding that you have to get up and open it and as many as got up to unveil it were given things that excited them immediately they unveil, something will be given to them, then the veil will go over that thing again, other people will go, and suddenly the one who was willing the, the thing now turned back and was going away. And so many other people are saying, no, bring it, bring it. And somebody like Anosha said, you were asked to come and unveil it to get yours, but you sat down there. Whatever will hinder us from getting into the purpose of God and appropriating the blessing that he has planned for us, the Almighty God will take away from our lives. Amen. We will not be weakened in the spirit. We will not be discouraged. There are so many things that make people not to get up to unveil what God has planned. Discouragement is one of them. Praise the Lord. But when you know, when you have understanding that this God we serve is a, is a great provider. It will change our mindset. Psalm 91, Psalm 91. Our text, which we will come back to, is Matthew, Matthew 17, 27. Matthew 20, sorry, 17, 27. But before we go there, let's read Psalm 91. And I will read. Psalm 91, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in whom will I trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover me with his feathers. And under his wings shall, me, shall I trust. His truth shall be my shield and buckler. I will not be afraid for the terror by the night, nor for the arrow that flies by the day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at my side, 10,000 at my right hand, but he shall not come near me. Only with my eyes shall I behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because the Lord has thou has made the, I have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, my habitation. 
that shall no evil before me, neither shall any plague come near my dwelling. Praise the Lord. Amen. And some people still sitting down, not unveiling the, the blessing. You are looking at me. I'm reading it. Amen. Please read it. He is our shelter. The summary of, of that scripture is that he is my shelter. He's also my comforter. Second Corinthians 1 3. Second Corinthians 1 3. 2 Corinthians 1 3 is my comforter. Psalm 103 13. Psalm 103 13 tells me that he is my healer. James 1 5. James 1 5. If you look at that scripture very well, you will know that God, this great provider, is the source of all wisdom. The right decision to take at what time and how to do it. He is my, the source of my wisdom. He said, if anyone lack wisdom, let him ask God. Mm -hmm. He said, but that was, Bible says, he gave it to all liberally. That is, he doesn't withhold any part. You get what you ask. Philippians 4.19 said, he is my supplier. Praise the Lord. But to have all this, that is, for God to be your shelter, to be your comforter. If you go back to the scripture we read in Psalm 91, he said, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. You must be at the secret place of the Most High. You must be, you must have personal relationship with Him. You must be able to, to lay beer before Him. You must have one-on-one -on -one relationship with him. That is when you can have all this. You, he can be your shelter. He can be your comforter. He can be your healer. He can be the source of your wisdom. And he can be your supplier. So, uh, Matthew 6.33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Every other thing shall be added. We are talking about what the great provider can do. But Hebrews 11.6 tells us that for you to be able to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, you must believe that God exists at all. You know that, don't take me, don't, don't, don't start any, don't let us start any theological debate. Not all of us here are deeply convinced that God exists. You are only a bit different from atheists. You are not, you, the, that conviction is really not there. Deep down in you. Because if you know, if you believe that God exists, you have absolute God uh, trust in him. As long as your trust is still, you are really not too sure. There is one word in the part of the world where I came from. They said is uh, is, it, it depends, that is, I don't know how to translate it. That is, it is the one who serves, it is you who serves that you know the God you serve. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You can't define God by how you serve Him. You can't define God by how you worship Him. God is God. No, no, nothing. It is not up to you to determine what God is. Or who God is. God is God. So, if you know that God is God, it is, it is you who need to walk on the level of your faith. You are the one to walk on the level at which you relate with him. And anything that is coming between you and God is up to you to ask God, Father, take away. Let me have free, free access to you. And God has provided this free access. Who is in Jesus. The free access that we have with God is Jesus. Romans 8, Romans 8, 17, DFR says, If we are children of God, if we have a part within, he said we are joint heirs. So that everything that we need, everything that we is due to us, we have a right 
to them. If we are children of God, we are joined. Yes. That means if we are born again Christians, God has provided everything we need in Christ. We just ask to access it through personal relationship with him. So if you are here, you have not given your life. Today is Thanksgiving Sunday. Those testimonies, they are, they are, and I know that more is coming. Amen. That would be more. Even the ones who thought that they have, um, Daddy Gio said something, I think, on Friday, and I claimed it, and I believe, if I remind you now, I want you to also claim it if you want. He said, because of what will happen to me, because of my testimony, the, my testimony will be the source of celebration before the end of this year. He said, the subject of my testimony will be the reason for testimony and for celebration. So shall it be for me and for those who are claiming it as well in Jesus' name. To round up, you know, this great provider, when you, when you, well, I used to say that when you are crying, we see. Whatever you may be facing, know that God has a hand in it. If you are having challenges, the day you, you recognize the challenge, the expiry date of that challenge starts to count down. The problem that will not end is the one that has not started. Every problem that has started in this place, every identified challenges, I pray that the, the, the peace be sealed Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Their end has come today. Amen. No problem will, 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 will go with you through this month. Amen. Throughout this month, as you spend the hour, as you spend the minute and the second, the Lord will be wiping away your tears of sorrow. Amen. And joy shall come in the morning for you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus, they were faced with serious problem. It was, I, I believe that then it was a serious problem to evade tax. And those who pay tax are people who are strangers. Now, but these people, they don't, they, they, are, they are like, uh, they are like people who give uh, uh, penalty charges and we are fighting them. They cannot come here and be giving us uh, penalty charges. Praise the Lord. You know, they don't hear come. The only thing they hear is go. So these people came, all they hear is go. And they confronted Jesus. They knew that Jesus is a Jew. And they knew the status, the citizenship of Peter. But anybody they see, they want to collect tax. Jesus now said, we are, we are not prepared for this. He even said to Peter, he said, from whom do they collect tax? Peter said, from strangers. He said, well, so that we will not offend them, so that they will not distract us from where we are going, so that they will not put us to shame. Uh, you are a fisherman. Okay, call fish to come. Let fish bring money. If Peter had been a doctor, he would have called, okay, bring sickness. Let sickness, because he's a great provider. The source of your income shall be the source of your abundance. Amen. You will not be put to shame. Amen. I like that testimony. That sister said she had been doing a particular work for 11 years and she resigned honorably. No blemish. The Lord will encircle you. Amen. You will not be put to shame. Amen. If there is anyone in your place of work that wants to to, 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 to cause problem for you. The heavens will cause fire to come down. No, it's a legitimate prayer because that is why that amen is not very resounding. It's a legitimate prayer because he, Elijah was faced. Before that fire came from heaven, Elijah would have been harassed. Elijah would have been seen as a fake prophet. He lied, the, 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 the people who were walking, who were trying to harass Elijah would have been flexing muscles. What happened? Elijah said fire should come down and it destroyed all the prophets of Baal. Every prophet of Baal concerning your career, concerning your life, concerning your joy, the fire of God will come down and clear them of you in the name of Jesus. Because you serve the great provider. 
Jesus now said, so that we will not, we will not offend them. He didn't even say that we will not offend the government. He said, so that this one, they are miscreants, let them go. He said, give them the money. Praise the Lord. At the end of the day, they were not put to shame. They were not harassed. They were not restricted from their journey. And they were not condemned. So when God intervenes through Christ, number one, he bless, all, he bless to meet our needs and obligations. Psalm 46, 1. Psalm 46, 1. Is my refuge? Is my present help in times of trouble? trouble. In all time, at all times. Concerning challenges, whether it's big or small, the Lord will arise for you. Amen. Isaiah 61 7. Isaiah 61 7, number two. The Lord covers our shame. Anything that will put you to shame. Not, you know, most times we measure things that we call shame by what other people say. I'm not talking about what other people say. What people say doesn't really matter. It is what makes you to be happy. So anything that will not cause you to be happy, the Lord will move against them. Amen. No, those things that what people say, they, are not, they don't matter. I tell my children, I said, don't care about your friends. Don't let your friends tamper with your destiny. Because very soon, you will no longer see them. Ask me those, I was I very, not many years ago, I was in primary school. I can't even remember their names again. Can't remember their names again. So if I had allowed them to tamper with the way I continue with the journey of my life, can't even see them again. So what matters is what you want from God. You will not be put to shame. Amen. When the Bible says, if before you ask, it said it will answer. That word will come to pass in your life. Amen. You will not serve God in vain. Amen. You will not be frustrated Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Isaiah 61 7. I thought people, somebody, yes. He said, For your shame, you shall have double. And for your confusion, they shall rejoice in your portion. Therefore, in your land, you shall possess the double. Amen. Everlasting joy shall be unto you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Number three, the last one. Psalm 90, 17. The, the first one we said, the Lord will bless our needs. He will cover our shames. Number two. Number three, he will prosper the works of your hands. Hmm. Now, it is the works of your hands that the Lord will prosper. When Jesus was going to pay those people, even though he was not expected to pay, but he wanted to take, just get rid of them so that they won't disturb him. He asked Peter to take money from the fish. Peter was a fisherman. Peter knew how to catch fish and take this thing from, from, from his mouth. Praise the Lord. Maybe if he had been David, he would have asked David, I would have asked him to go and bring a lamp. No, David was a shepherd boy. It is what you know to do. It is true there that God will prosper you. Amen. That is, if you are doing what is right. If you are a robber, <laughs> you won't prosper you through robbery. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, people, some people, not everybody will carry guns are robbers. Those who do not pay tithe are robbers. Yes. Amen. 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 Don't like to hear that. <laughs> And I too don't like to say, I don't, I don't know how to say it. Amen. Amen. Maybe God knew that I, do, I won't know how to come and talk about offering and tithe. That's why he gave the revelation to the Kimball on the road. And he gave me that it is a covering that you need to open. So if you want to open, if you want to serve God in all ways, you must obey. One of the obedience is to pay your tithe. Amen. Amen. Am I saying it now? Yes. Okay. So to unlock the God's blessings, number one, obedience. Psalm, First uh, Samuel fifteen twenty two it said, obedience is better than sacrifice. sacrifice. Number two, giving, giving of money, giving of tithe, giving of offering, giving of love, giving of love. Even if you don't have money, give love, give service, and that is why. Whether anybody likes it or not, those who come here to clean the house of God, they shall be blessed. Amen. Even if they don't pray, 
Some things they don't pray about. Maybe they forget to pray about. The Lord will give to them. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. When you have love, when you have compassion towards others, you will, you will unlock God's blessings. And Galatians 5, 13, serving others. When you just serve others, and remember, I said that those who, who God will be their great provider will be those who are joint heirs with Christ within. That is, those who believe he exists and those who believe in exists who also surrenders their life to, to him. So if you are here, you have not given your life, it's a time of consideration. For the rest of us, we are going to pray just two prayers. Father, cover my shame. I don't know what your shame is. Like I said, your shame, the shame we are talking about is not what others are saying. Because when the Lord turned the captivity of Zion, they will be like them that dream. When the Lord meets, the shame I'm talking about is the desires of your heart. When the Lord grants you the desires of your heart, those who are saying something, they will say better thing. Cover my shame, Google. Cover my shame. You are the great provider. As I worship you today, as I give thanks to you, Father, cover my shame. Cover my shame. In the mighty name of Jesus, cover my shame. If you are here, you want to give your life to Christ, please, in addition to that prayer, begin to pray, Father, accept me. Accept me, accept. I'm giving my life to you as an offering, as a thanksgiving offering. First thanksgiving offering today, I'm giving my life to you. I'm rededicating my life for all that you have done, for even making me. Lord, accept me. Accept me, oh God. Cover my shame. In the name of Jesus, Father, cover my shame. Meet all the needs of my life. My desires, let them come to pass. Open ways for me. Open good ways for me. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, our God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. The second prayer that we will pray, Father, prosper the works of my hands. The work of the hand of Peter was prospered. The time the Lord said, cast down your net, that was just a child's play. But when they were faced with when shame was going to come, when they were going to be restricted, when they were going to be condemned, the Lord used the expertise of Peter to cause a way of escape. Father, prosper the work of my hands. Prosper the works of my hand. Before I call, Father, answer me. Let my hand be on top at all times. Let the spirit of excellence come upon me. The spirit to favor. The spirit to prefer. Father, let you come upon me. Spirit of excellence and sound divine wisdom. Father, release upon my life. Give me. Let me not make mistake. No professional mistake. Will I make that people will, 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 will be able to cause damnation to come to me? Lord, help me, O oh God. Prosper the works of my hands. Elevate me, promote me in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. So shall it be in Jesus' name. The Lord Almighty will cover your shame. The King of Glory will cause peace to come to your vineyard. The rewarder of those of who diligently seek him will reward you for good. You will not be condemned in the name of Jesus. The power of God will rest upon you and will prosper the works of your hands. And use your work, the works of all your hands to cause peace, elevation, joy and abundance to come to you. Doors that no man can shut shall open unto you. The Lord will promote you. Your children shall possess this land. Amen. You will possess this land Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord will not cause you to be relegated. You will call, the Lord will cause you to fly. Amen. You will run, you will not be weary. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jehovah Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord.